Hello, what have we here? Hello there. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. We're smarter than this. Happy beeps. We'll use the force. That's not how the force works. He doesn't like you. I don't like you either. I got a bad feeling about this. Welcome to episode 119 of the Smugglers Galaxy podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. Jason's pointing at me. Jason, how are you doing tonight? Good. I may add the original Smugglers theme podcast <laughs> in this galaxy. No, I'm just playing. That'd be great. It's funny. Last week I was doing a Google search because Spotify had released all of their, you know, best of the year stuff. So everyone's looking at their things. But from a content creator point of view, uh-huh. you get you get access to all that information from 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 a, a content creator so you get to see you know how many people actually listen to your podcast before other podcasts and all that kind of stuff but uh, it's been a while since i checked our reviews on spotify and so uh-huh. i just wanted to see because a couple of people rated us so i'm like oh what does that mean i type in smugglers and i see that there's another smugglers podcast out there smugglers dispatch and they've kind of named themselves in a similar pattern as us so I guess what we're doing is working. If people are copying it, I wish them the best. And I know how difficult it can be to break into Star Wars podcasting. So good luck. Yeah, buddy. Good luck, guys. <laughs> That's I'll why say, I say the original Smugglers. The original Smugglers Galaxy podcast. We'll have to add that in there. Um, yeah, I'm Glenn. There's Jason. Sorry. Oh, no, it's all good, man. I got to remember to introduce myself, even though people know who I am, but you know, you may have somebody who hasn't listened for it in forever or never listened. So I guess it's all a, a radio thing. I don't know. Because we are kind of like want to be radio people, I guess. Who, who, I don't know. Yeah, I did go. You know what? What's funny is like back in the day when I was in high school, I knew a guy who uh, was like into like all the radio stuff. And we went down to like Star 94 and like played DJ in one of their like voiceover booths. And it was just crazy. It was, you know, just funny uh, playing DJ in like a real radio booth. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, the guy that let us in, you know what he you know who he was? Who? Ryan Seacrest. Oh, really? Yeah, back in the day. That's right. Man. He's from Atl- he's from Atlanta. That's right. Yeah, it was, and it took me years. Like, this is ninety four star. Yes, star ninety four, something like that. Star ninety whatever. This. It's start you for hey hey you know what happened to me this week i um mm-hmm. i had to go get i had to go get my glasses adjusted you know because okay. i broke them and, and guess who okay. i ran into ryan seacrest everybody everybody what oh because you never your glasses <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. My brain went to Backstreet Boys for some reason. Everybody, I'm like, what? Ah, rock your body. Backstreet's yeah. back. All right, all right. So we've lost everybody. Yeah. <laughs> How do we bring them back? Did you use the new song for this episode? No, I haven't. Are we using it for? What are we using, using it for? for? I thought use it was it for, for this Christmas. One. I could use it for this one. How'd you like? Yeah, we'll use the new song. Okay. That was like, a cool song that we played. <laughs> it was awesome. I loved yeah, it. We'll do it this week and next week. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, we'll be, uh, yeah, fun times. How was your week? I know. Huh? Uh, I know you had a good week. You picked up something really cool. Yes, I did. I picked up the, uh, my Wampa. I picked up a first shot Wampa. Uh, saga collection a couple of weeks ago when it showed up on Sunday after two weeks yeah. of roaming the galaxy from Germany. I w- it, it, and I hate 
and it's 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 really cool because it's all white. It's got the, all the accessories that came with the wampa. So it's got the like the piece of meat or whatever, the bone that he has in his mm-hmm. mouth, and then it's got the the ice sculpture or whatever that we you could take the Luke and because it came with a there was a separate Luke that came with it that you put them together and they make a set, and um, so it has all basically all the accessories for that piece. Uh, and it's just really cool because the ice sculpt, the ice is see through and the Wampa, I kind of freaked out a little bit because I remembered you could pull the arm off of the production version. So I'm like, I could pull the arm off of this one. And it kind of freaked me out a little bit that I did that on a first shot, but it came off and went right back on. So, oh, it was designed. yeah, it was designed to do that. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully, it was like, oh, what if they didn't design this one to do yeah. that? Right. Um, what but, if that was a running change right oh. but i need to take the production one and take the arm off and see because the, there's a peg that stays on the body of the wampa so i don't know if the peg stays on the arm or whatever but like the the blood or what would be the red ring of blood or whatever is like a different color so it was, that was kind of cool to see um so there was a change of somewhat yeah i guess the, the I, paint's different yeah the paint well the, well it's all different is the paint different because it it's a first shot so it's all done in one color oh okay never mind yeah I, i'd have to look at the now that i'm thinking about it it's like i should have prepared better for the podcast and gone look at it um but it was really annoying just tracking it because you'll see that you know it'll sit it's sat in customs for what felt like two weeks and then it you know, then it just never moves. And then all of a sudden you check it and it's out for delivery. And I was like, it showed in New Jersey forever. Yeah. And then next time it updates, it's they'll get delivered on a Sunday. Yeah. That happened with the, uh, the sign off sample I got for that action fleet piece where it came from China. And then I didn't, I just, we, we bought from him before, so there's no problem. And I was never concerned that it w- I was not going to receive it or or that he was trying to pull a fast one or anything like that. I was that was not a concern. But it said at one point shipment has been abandoned. Oh my god. I'm like what does that mean? And I'm just looking at it and I'm looking at the news from China of all the lockdowns and the things are being not shipped over and I'm like did they just abandon shipping this thing? What does that mean? And so I was just waiting for something to click, maybe some new news or some new shipment information is going to come through and it just sat there for it looked like a week or two mm-hmm. and this shipment has been abandoned thing. So I asked him, he's like, Oh no, here they just switched uh, the way they were shipping it. So here's your new tracking number and all that. So, oh, okay. And it came no problem, but I was just a little freaked out by the abandoned thing. Yeah. I, it always freaks me out. I'm always, I'm wanting my stuff here yesterday and it just all, you know, I have no patience. Like yeah. I said before, I would no, not make a good same. Jedi because I have no patience and I always want my stuff yesterday. And it just, when you have that much money riding on something coming from Germany, it it's a little nerve wracking. Same. Yeah. Um, was, was that the only thing you picked up? Uh, no, I picked up, my son works for Universal and they were having a like major sale uh, a couple of weeks ago. So he finally mailed me the package because he calls me. He's like, I'm in the shop and they're selling stuff for cheap. And I picked up a doc, um, doc Brown. Oh. It's called like a cause baby or something. Um, hot toys, put them out and it was really okay. cheap. Huh? Okay. You'll have to see it. Baby. I mean, it's kind of, it's a okay. cool statue. It's probably like four or five inches tall. Um, okay. And then I got some Back to the Future boxer briefs. TMI. <laughs> he was like, there's Back to the Future underwear. They're like $2. I'm like, pick them up. I don't care. And then my <laughs> wife uh, my wife got some uh, E.T. pajamas and an E.T. flannel and like an E.T. Hawaiian shirt. So basically what the flannel cost, we paid what the flannel cost and got all that other stuff for free if you want to look at it that way. So if you drive in your underwear, eighty-eight miles per hour, does the underwear see some sh- serious shit? <laughs> Probably. Okay. I wonder if I if I was to leave a, a streak in the underwear, if it would time yeah, travel. That's, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much potty humor. I think that's all I got, man. How was it? Yeah, you- I had I had a busy week. 
Yeah. I went over to Second Chance. Oh yeah, um, hold on. I did go to Second Chance. Sorry, sorry. Beep, 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 beep. I went to Second Chance on Sunday, uh, and I picked up the Slave Leia hol- uh, Christmas tree ornament because they had one, and I didn't have it, and it was yeah. like dirt cheap. I think yeah. he, ha- I think he had it underpriced, but I know he he knows yeah. his, his stuff, so I was like, I gotta buy that. So you went to Second Chance, and what did you get? Yeah, I went to Second Chance. I can't remember what did I go there for. Um. But, but anyways, maybe it was just to kill time or something. Yeah, it was because my yeah, I was gonna pick up Harrison from robotics and I had to kill like a half hour. So he, second chances on the way. I stopped in and I picked up that TC fourteen from episode one. And for whatever reason, that one is in the back of my mind is a must have because I never had it for twenty plus years and it's trying to find it in good condition. They had it in good condition, and I asked him, Where did this come from? And he said some guy came in, had everything in star protectors. It looks great. So awesome. I've got that one. So that which was the, that was yes. like the silver protocol droid that you first see in episode one. Okay. So and it came out late in the line. So it was one of the diff, more difficult ones to find. And then excuse me, the TVC Obi Wan Kenobi three pack with Obi Wan Tika and the Purge Trooper came. Mm-hmm. A really cool three pack and uh the shipping gods had blessed me because there was no dents or dings it's like mint condition i forgot to cancel the ned b black series droid because i pre-ordered it and then it was a couple weeks later a couple months later they showed the packaging and it was the plastic free packaging and i was like i'm just out so i can't see the figure i don't need it but then i forgot to cancel this guy so now i have that forgot before the social i also got that kenner akbar as a black series figure it was a uh-huh. convention exclusive for something um they just took an akbar and they painted it with the color the kenner deco um today i just got my tvc stormtrooper star wars stormtrooper i got one from this used to be a walmart exclusive uh-huh. but mine came crushed because it came in a bubble mailer and then Entertainment Earth went up, and I'm like, oh, I just need to buy one because they're going to know how to package and ship it. And it came today in perfect condition. Yay. And then the last thing I picked up, I got the TVC Hoth Trooper 4-pack. But the interesting thing about that, do you remember for Toylanta, we did the Kenner paintings. We asked different painters and stuff to do that. Yeah. Take a, take a vintage figure and paint whatever you want with it. And so Stu... Kesselman painted the uh, Boba Fett one. He did watercolor, yeah. and he's 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 obviously an, a great artist. And he he's friends with the guy that's doing the drawings for that vintage collection trooper packs, the four packs, the white boxes, and it's got like a line drawing, and he put a splash of color on it. Well, oh yeah 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 yeah. He uh he drew Stu as one of the Hoth troopers. <laughs> that's great because they're friends. Yeah, so that's a little nice little tidbit. So every time I look at that, I'm like, oh, there's Stu on my action figure. <laughs> that's great. That's sort of like what they that's did with G.I. Awesome. Joe towards the end. They just started throwing themselves in the figures. Yeah. I know it's a lot, but that's what I picked up. Cool. I know my wife picked me up something for Christmas, and she was like, oh, this is really cool. So we'll see if she can wait till Christmas to give it to me. Hmm. It's only a week and a half away now. Dude, it's crazy that it's right there, man. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Freaking Christmas is next week or whatever, week and a half. Yeah. yeah. So I got a bunch of news. Yeah, let's go over the news. A bunch of discussion topics. Uh, I guess let's start with the latest news that AFA is halting loose grading. Yeah. I I, I knew they had halted other things are graded um about a year ago i think they halted everything but star wars loose and now i guess they're doing it for star wars because they got to catch up right because they got to catch up yeah which is interesting because it does seem like the hobby is cooling yeah like you'll see things and i've talked to people um they're just nobody's buying it's just like saying this is for sale in, in an abyss and nobody can hear you it's just Huh. It just seems like things are very, very quiet, and uh, the high, higher, higher end pieces aren't selling as fast. And 
everything's kind of changed. It's not the 2020 anymore. I mean, we're a couple of years removed from that and people are going back to work and they don't have the money and yada, yada, yada. And so it just seems like the hobby is cooled. Uh, yeah. I, I, I can agree with that. I, I do think that I, I see that happening. Uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine and it, it's the same way, like with my transformer buddy. And it, he said that, yeah, it just feels like people are not buying. He had showed me, Actually, it doesn't matter because it's not a vintage transformer, but he bought a transformer that was like the second generation or something for like 800 bucks from Hanks. And I'm like, that should have been a lot more. And he was surprised too. Um, but it does feel that way that it's cooling. Huh? There was a there was a post in the Dianoga trash group. They're making fun of it for something else, but it was the action stand with the backdrop. Somebody bought it for 30 bucks. Oh yeah, I saw that. And it was just like 30 bucks, really? That's that's a steal. Like what's going on with the hobby right now? Either that or he got it from a, a yard sale that they didn't know what they had. Maybe that's possible too. I didn't think about that. I, I just I, assumed it was an online eBay thing. I think it's somebody that's not knowing what they are. Dude, I do have a, a gripe about eBay when we get in a minute, once we get through all this, but uh, get through it. Okay. No, I was looking for, so somebody had posted some uh, wax pieces of galactic heroes. Yeah. And nothing complete, just like a wax arm, or I don't think they they had like a maybe a torso or a part of a torso or whatever. Um, and I'd bid like 150 bucks on it. And I was the high bidder until that thing uh finished and it finished at like five hundred dollars. It's like refreshed, five hundred dollars. I guess yeah, it's those damn bots. Just, yeah, either the bots or someone just threw in the biggest amount they could. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that doesn't work that way. I don't know. Yeah, no. I mean, I guess it could if somebody throws in a bit high bid and then somebody else comes in and throws another high bid. Yeah, but that has to happen in like seconds. Yeah. Like if you if I threw five hundred bucks down and you threw four ninety five and it was at one fifty, like it will jump up to the five hundred dollar bid. Right. Right. So it's possible. I was watching a uh, the chase, the Grogu Micro Galaxy Squadron speed be, uh, speeder bike guy. Uh huh. Which is selling for about fifty bucks, which is a lot of money. But when you factor in how many I have to buy to get that guy, it might be just cheaper to buy the guy off of eBay than it is to buy several dozen Micro Galaxy Squadron things. And so, yeah, I was bid out at the last minute. The same kind of thing. I didn't bring it up because it's just typical eBay. You got to go in with uh, your cash on the table, ready to spend thousands of dollars and hope that you get it for fifty. Right. So what were we talking about? Bad Batch 2. Yes. Uh, Bad Batch Season 2 dropped. The trailer dropped, I should say. I was just watching cool. that before you came on. I wanted to catch up with it because I hadn't had a chance to watch it. Uh, I thought it looked pretty it's good. Kind of, it's kind of underwhelmed. That I was. I'm hoping they're holding uh, some things for us. They didn't want to show all their cards quite yet. Uh, I did kind of yeah. like that the uh, Jedi Wookiees in there. So that's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But that's about the I, only and, like major spoiler, right? Yeah, I mean Rex is back, but I mean he was in the first season, so that's not a spoiler. I, I think the issue I had with it is we've gotten used to these, you know, like long character arcs that take you know eight episodes, but it's not very rarely will you get like the uh, episode of the week with the way they're telling stories now. Right. Um, it's it felt like these were like several separate stories all in one trailer. That one maybe makes that sense. was it felt a little disjointed maybe to me because of that. And they did kind of do that last year that because they did the Hera yeah. episode, uh, and it, it felt like they did that one one or two other times, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe when Rex came on, he's like, I got a mission for you. I'm like, Well, that's one episode. And like maybe I'm seeing the production behind it you know mm. i'm not brought into the storytelling so much i'm seeing the behind the scenes maybe i don't know yeah i was more impressed with the indiana jones and the dial of destiny trailer i mean i still haven't that? i need i think i watched watch that i think i watched it i, I want to know if jack black's matt adam for stealing his uh, movie title the pick of destiny Oh, pick a destiny. Is Jack Black mad? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just curious if he would be. 
there was a couple there was a room and i bring this up i know we're star wars podcast and i've said it before indiana jones is star wars's cousin um i bring it up because there was rumors that harrison ford was going to be in a star wars show de-aged but when you see the trailer i'm like this is probably what they're talking about because mm-hmm. they de-aged him back to like late uh uh last crusade kind of look okay and it's phenomenal. You would have thought that they shot this 20 years, 20, 30 years ago and just saved it for this movie. It doesn't look weird like uh, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, and some of those shots. This looks classic Harrison Ford at his peak of his power in 1990, 91, 92. I'll have to pay more attention when I rewatch it. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, would you think the budget is more because it's a movie versus a TV show? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But it's still the same team de-aging. Yeah. So hopefully if they've in- invested into this movie, it will benefit Star Wars because they have the technology. They used Indiana Jones to get a more powerful computer at the lab. Now they have the computer at the lab. They can do more with uh, Mandalorian. Yeah. There's still no word who Christopher Lloyd is playing in Mando season three. Right. So that's official that he's in it, right? I'm pretty sure it is. I don't have anything in front of me that says official, but I thought it was like right at the end of filming they said that Christopher Lloyd has joined filming. They've teased they've teased it enough. You'd think that it would be. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say because you haven't watched Indiana Jones, you probably haven't watched any of Willow. I have been watching Willow. Oh, you have? Yes. Did you watch the original? I, it's movie? been 20 it's, well actually it's been like jesus 30 years yeah what do you think of the show i'm enjoying the show it it yeah. has uh it definitely has a game of thrones vibe to it but i think it's just because of where it's the time it's set in um but i do and i am enjoying it it's a good good show the, i think the music in it is is pretty cool i like i like the music in it uh yeah. i'm enjoying it it's it's a fun show I'm I'm the uh, supporter of shut your brain off, and enjoy the show. But I'm struggling with it, and I think it's the tone. I think really, it's a de- I think it's a departure from the movie. Uh huh. Because the movie, they really tried to make it like a Lord of the Rings a fantasy adventure, and this this show doesn't feel like it knows what it wants to be. It's got its toes into different different pools. Like at some points, it's a straight up fantasy a sequel to Willow. Other times it feels like meta, like a Mel Brooks movie where it knows that it's a movie. Uh huh. Um, I don't. Uh, maybe some of the songs, some of the th- the things that they say seems modern. Um, but you know, like you're saying with the music, I don't know if it's like a modern fantasy because they use the modern music. Like it works in Westworld, but I don't know if it works in a fantasy like this. Mm. I don't know. I'm glad to see, and I also, you know, what really turned me off is when the queen said something like, "You're not a great sorcerer." Uh-huh. I'm like, "What? He just he saved everybody in the first one from the witch. Like, he is a great sorcerer. What are you talking about?" And you can feel that affect him now, because I, or maybe just because the power takes so much out of him, he doesn't want to use it. Or he's scared to lose it or something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I'm Did enjoying it. You... Huh? I guess maybe I'm enjoying it more because I don't remember the movie. Maybe. <laughs> and my wife was really into the movie. So maybe, and she keeps, you know, every time we're done watching it, they'll pop up, watch Willow. And maybe I'll watch Willow once the, ep- once the season's done. Um, because I definitely, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Yeah. Uh, it was the same way they did the Resident Evil show on netflix i don't think i missed anything not seeing resident evil yeah uh and i think they do that with star wars i mean you're gonna miss some of the the nuances but you're not you're not missing much okay i don't know maybe because because i well let me because like at the beginning of each show they're showing a book and i asked my wife and i'm like there was something with the book in the original right she goes yes but she didn't get into it was it a book of spells? I don't remember. Maybe I don't I need remember. To go back and watch it. Yeah, I just remember it was. I, I saw it when I. Oh gosh, I was probably in middle school when I saw it, 
because I went with a buddy of mine and we were, I was probably in seventh, seventh or eighth grade. It was before junior high. Yeah. I really miss Val Kilmer and that whole Mad Mordigan suave rogue character. Well, I, and they, they've got that new guy. Was his name board? Yeah. Was it boredom? The guy with the big sword. Yeah, the big beard. He's he's awesome. He's like one of my favorite characters on the show so far. But I really miss that rogue Han Solo, suave. You know, like I'm saying, the that guy is is Val Kilmer still alive? Is his character still alive? He's still alive. He had throat cancer and he's unable to talk. Oh. And so they played that up in in that other movie you haven't seen, Top Gun. Top Gun Maverick. But, yeah, Maverick, but they use a synthesizer to help him talk huh. in that movie. So, um, yeah, so he's not making appearances, and he can't carry a whole movie like that because of his health, but you, I do well, miss him. I mean, they could do something like that there where maybe he doesn't talk or just kind of waves or fights a battle and then walks away. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's weird is you say that, but there was a guy, there's a guy here, a reporter on the radio, uh, Jamie Dupree, and he got throat cancer and lost his voice, and they took all of his word. They they he was able he, he had talked so much on the radio, they were to make a program where he could type, and his voice sounded. You're like that's a computer, but that's what they did with him as they synthesized his voice. Oh, uh, yeah, but I don't hear him anymore. I don't know if he, I guess he no. retired. When you said waving, I just envision them on their horses, you know, going to do their mission. You see Mel <laughs> Kilmer on the hilltop waving, and they just keep going by. That's that my was buddy. Fun. Yeah, I, I think um, it, it it's so, getting there. I'm enjoying it. It's a it's a good show. I'm still watching it because I still love the first one, and I hope those creatures that they used that was it was it rank the rancor original concept art for the rancor they used in willow it was that dragon you'd cut off the head and it would sprout two more i don't know yeah that was macquarie art for return of the jedi that they recycled was it in this one or the original the original okay might have been for bid for tuna i can't remember but either way they reused the art like verbatim from what macquarie did for willow it's a Lucasfilm thing, so and George Lucas did it, so why not? Yeah, and Ron Howard directed it. Opie Cunningham. Opie Cunningham. <laughs> um, Hasbro uh, released a couple pre-orders this last week for the TVC Bunker. Uh, it comes with a Biker Scout and uh, actually a Rebel Trooper and a Biker Scout disguise. That Nick Saint is that his name? Nick Santi? Nick Saint? I don't know. Um, it's the guy that people think is Rex because he's got the old man with the beard, but they have him dressed up as a speeder bike guy. Yeah. Um, so it comes with the bunker. I thought that was pretty cool. I like what Hasbro's doing with the environments. Um, seems like the pendulum has swung so far away from doing vehicles. Now they're, they're just doing only uh, the dioramas and the set pieces. They're not doing the vehicles anymore. And I say that because the next thing I'm about to talk about is the ATST, but <laughs> But that's a repack. This I'm talking about like new stuff. And right. They don't do new vehicles anymore. They do new dioramas, and um, I like it. I just wish there was a little bit more to it. Mm -hmm. And then, aren't they charging like seventy dollars for it? Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, it would look great on a shelf. You've got all your speeder bikes around it. You've got your spiker scouts and all that. So it's gonna look good on a shelf like that. But you know, I don't know. No, dude, I feel you. I, I, I'm excited that they, I think they're kind of getting you to buy it because it's a figure that they haven't released yet. So that's kind of yeah. cool, even though it's basically a repaint. They just put somebody and did a new head on it, which yeah. I don't understand why they don't do more of that because there's opportunities there and they just haven't done it, which would be cool. And we'd buy them because, you know, they're cool figures. Uh, but they did that crap with, I'm changing it up a little bit, but they did that. They did a, a, an X-Men, they did a Gambit that's like a in a three pack. And it's like, I don't want the other two figures. I want the Gambit. But to get the Gambit, I got to buy the whole. I'm not spending seventy five dollars to get a figure. At least this, you have something you can use. Yeah. Or something like the bunker. Somebody may buy the bunker off of you because they want to use it for dioramas. Yep. But yeah, I'll get yeah. that. <laughs> 
the other thing that they came out with is the ATST, the chicken walker from uh I guess it's the Return of the Jedi. I was gonna say from Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, but I think Empire Strikes Back had a different design to it a little bit. Okay. Anyways, uh it comes with the Chewbacca, different sculpted Chewbacca, and a lot of people are upset that it's not carded. Uh... And it's not and I found a lot of people talking about it not being the alternative Kenner card back from Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. I I guess I don't care that much. <laughs> because I'm not like upset. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's a nice chewy. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. But yeah, I mean Kenner should uh, Kenner um Hasbro should listen to the fans and if that's what they want, give it to them. I mean, it should be an easy thing. Mm-hmm. You're not re-sculpting. You're just hitting print and printing a different card back. I don't know. So the, the ch- card back for the Chewy or the card back for the ATST? The ATST comes boxed with a bag Chewbacca. Okay. And the bag Chewbacca, people are saying, should be a carded Chewbacca with a different Chewbacca. It's the alternative version because, you know, Kenner used to release the same card back over and over again. But when it got to Return of the Jedi, they tried to add some newness. Right. And so they did that with Chewie. Um, and people are asking for that, especially since for the Black Series, they use the alternative co- uh, card back mm-hmm. for the Black Series Return of the Jedi. They didn't use the same one over and over again. So it's like, well, just shrink it down. And that's what they're asking. Put it for 3.75. I, I could understand why they want it because then you got to redo all the packaging on the inside too. Yeah. It's not, it's not as simple as just throwing, putting a card and throwing it in there. You know, because then you got to redo the packaging because then people are going to gripe because, oh, my card got smushed or the bubble got smushed or where or there's a semicircle on the yak, yak face that shouldn't be there. Then people yeah. are going to gripe about that. So mine did, bag them mine, and throw. Huh? One of mine had that, the yak faces. The other one didn't. I got gotcha. you. How'd you end up with two of them? I bought two barges. I sold one. Ah, oh, look at you go. Well, Smart. I bought it. Uh, yeah, I bought in when I thought that it wasn't going to go. Yeah. So that's and why I, bought, I didn't buy it in for an investment. And then COVID came and I'm like, oh, I can sell this for some money and pay off for the, not pay off, pay for part of the one that I have. Gotcha. Um, but I did buy that ATST because I didn't get the original Kmart version. And, and then I skipped the Mandalorian one because I was so used to like getting everything on clearance, vehicle yeah. on clearance. And then we went to Toylanta and they were asking $200 for that Mandalorian. Oh my God. ETST. I didn't buy the Mandalorian one because I had the Black Series one that never stood up right. Yeah. Uh, Hasbro, I was going to say Kenner. Why do I keep wanting to say Kenner? Because we're so used to it, that. man. Yeah. Yeah. So you said, Kenner, think said they, huh? Kenner said that they fixed that and made okay, it more good. stable. Good. Um, then the last piece of news, I thought we'd just run through this real quick. Um, Micro Galaxy Squadron on Instagram released the full checklist for Series 2. Uh-huh. I thought we'd just go through that real quick to yeah. identify what everything is. Let's go for it. So in the Scout class, which is the blind packs, you got the speeder bike with Leia. You've got Din Dejarin. <laughs> Din Jaren. <laughs> Din you got Jaren. the Mandalorians, Din Jaren. You've got the Mandalorian on the speeder bike with Grogu, and isn't uh, okay? Is that one Beskar? I think so. Yeah. Okay. You've got the ATRT, which is another one of those chicken walker looking guys with Hunter on it, Bad Batch. Right. And I could see what it, what what they're doing now because you get Hunter here, but then you get the the ship itself with. Um, not Hunter with uh, what's the big guy? Havoc, not Havoc. Wrecker, Wrecker, and Omega is what comes with the other one. Okay. So if you get the blind pack, now you've added another part of the bad batch. You've got Hunter. You get the staff and the battle droid. Um, that's the little bike that they fly through the forest on. Mm-hmm. There's a bark speeder with a clone trooper, and that bark speeder is the one that there's a little tab on the back of the LAAT. Micro Galaxy Squadron thing that you can attach the speeder bike to. So it folds up and it folds down. And it looks like he's there, like ready to go. That's so awesome. Uh, the 10 of 4 escape pod, which is a rare one. 
That's with R2-D2. That one I want. I want that one. There's another staff, which is, again, the the thing that the battle droids ride in on, but it's got the Clone Wars General Skywalker on it. Yeah. That one's tough to find. And then the, the really tough one to track down, which is the equivalent of the Grogu Biker Scout of Series 1, is the Bard Speeder with General Kenobi. That'll be the tough one to find. Uh, for the light class, which is like the X Wings uh, from this season, series one, you've got Yoda's Jedi, Jedi Starfighter, the TIE Fighter, Battle Damaged, Hera's X Wing, which is um, going to be uh, you mean chased to 15,000. A Wing, sorry, what did yeah. I say? You said X Wing. Sabine Wren's TIE Fighter is going to be the 5,000 chase. <sighs> yeah. yeah, we already saw it for what, 160 bucks this week on eBay. And I know you were kind of freaking out about that, but I've seen enough people like our buddy Sam, he found two of the jet Luke Jedi. You know, so I'm I have a feeling that I'm not worried about it yet, but yet. yet. I will be worried when I can't find one. Then I will be worried. Yeah. Then I'll have to pay the 150 bucks and just buy it off eBay. Um for the Starfighter class, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, you got Bo Katan's Gauntlet Starfighter, which looks really good. Max said they had to scale it down just a little bit to make it fit into this line. Right. But th- that's a really cool. I saw someone playing with that on YouTube last night. That was really good. Luke Skywalker Snow hey, Speeder. Guess who's going to be playing with one tomorrow? You? Yeah. What? The Snow Speeder? No, the uh, Bo Katan. Gauntlet. Thing. Why? You get it? It's coming. It, it's coming tomorrow on Amazon. Oh, lucky. Lucky. Yeah. Lucky. Gosh. Lucky. Yeah, um, tomorrow by 10 p.m. Damn. Yeah. Maybe it'll go up and I can get one. <laughs> uh Luke Skywalker Snow Speeder, which looks really good again. It's got a tow cable that comes out and is retractable, which is a nice function to that guy. The uh the battle tank the with the battle droids from episode one, the big white thing that kind of looks like it's like bony. It's got yeah. the big fin on the front. Towards the ground, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ahsoka's Jedi Starfighter is a rare one. Um, so that'll be 1500, 15,000, excuse me. Uh, comes with R7, A7. And then the chase from this line is Antok Merrick's X Wing, which will be 5,000. We've already seen the um, Republic LAAT ship and Jango Fett Starship at Target. So those are currently available, but they are part of Series 2. Havoc's Marauder should be a Target. A time target exclusive, but it's already appearing at Macy's. Hmm. You can order it from Macy's, but it's a lot more expensive. Gotcha. It's like 50 bucks. Jeez. And then down at this little place called Walt Disney World in Disneyland, there's a Millennium Falcon. It's a Batu version. It comes with uh Vi. And what's that guy? Hondo? Hondo. Hondo. Welcome, my friend. Him. And then did it uh, come with his droid? Yeah, his droid too. And Chewbacca. So it comes with those four figures. Oh, good on. Hey, you know what? Good on Galaxy Squadron, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's series two. They still planned out to series seven. I saw a recent interview. Um, yeah. Seven that... is still the. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. I'm, I'm hoping they can make it to series seven. Yeah. Kind of like what I was saying before about clearance you know has the the audience for star wars kind of trained themselves pebble pebble and dog when they see a vehicle they wait for it to go on clearance they don't buy it the only i mean the only way that's going to stop that is for stuff for us not to be able to find stuff yeah you know we wait and we lose out and then we buy it uh i did see the uh jango's x-wing and that was a good i mean um star ah. Starship. The Dango, yeah. His Starship the other day, I saw a couple of them at Target. I think I saw them today, and they look pretty good. It's just, it's weird seeing that ship clean. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I, I have two. I'm thinking about ordering one, but we also talked about that giveaway. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, I almost picked one up just to have one different, but I'm in the middle of this crazy, my brain is running a mile a minute with everything I want to do with this room, so. Yeah, I'm like running through some fog too. Um, I don't know if it's the holidays. You know, I had the winter social and then I've been planning my company's um, holiday party. So 
I'm like coming off of it and I'm just like frazzled and I can't think like I couldn't <laughs> come up with Hondo's name. And I'm like, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to be like that for about two months. So we'll be good. The only peg warmers I see are like the uh, Asajj Ventra ship. That's the only one when I go into the stores I see hanging out. I don't see very many of Darth Vader's. I don't see many of Obi Wan's. They are out there. Yeah, I can easily grab one, but they're pretty much just that. It's just the one. I'm I'm seeing the at like the original X Wing. I'm seeing a Tie Fighter. You're seeing the bigger ships. I'm seeing the troop transport. Um. I'm seeing the X. Well, I'm also seeing them at our tar- Our Walmart's like way overstocked with these. I think uh, they have a ton of a ton of Tie Fighter. Ah, shoot, ton of Falcons, ton of Slave Ones, ton of transports. The bigger ships I'm seeing. The smaller ships that are in that I think under twenty dollars sweet spot. Those are getting those. The popular ones are getting picked up pretty quick. Yeah, and I have to say I love the packaging for this thing. The art is beautiful. That original airbrushed art on the side and sometimes in the back it's the backdrop that nice foil that mm-hmm. they've got going around it's a nice detail like i think it's a really slick package yeah i'm i think they've got a good product and i, I think they've got a good price i think the under 20 dollar price point is is smart on them because you know people can't afford it some you know some i don't have the room to have a full line of huge vintage ships but i got a couple of shelves i can commit to uh Micro yeah. Galaxy Squadron, and it's good on them. I hope they, you know, I wish them the best of luck because they've got a good product. Yeah. And yeah, I can't wait. I do. I, I want it. Yeah, I've got the X, I've got the Bo Katan ship, and I got the Snow Speeder order on Amazon. I would like to find the Ahsoka TIE Fighter or Ahsoka Jedi uh, Fighter. Uh, but the Hera and the Sabine are got to finds for me for in this way. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, come to the point where I like the packaging and I want to start collecting them in the box too. <laughs> and they're, they're a great price point, but I just don't have the room for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love it. I thought I, I like the stuff. I think it's great. And yeah, I'm. The, um, yeah, as far as the room goes, because my wife and I were talking, I think we're going to do the same thing we did that you did. I'm going to do the same thing. Bring my bring my desk upstairs, and then this way I've got more wall space to do more with. So I can bring in even more, <laughs> more yeah. uh, things. So yeah, and just totally redo my room and re- just redo all this downstairs and just spend a couple of months, you know, as best I can without spending a whole bunch of money, redo this room and and come at it with a new ink from a fresh set of eyes. This desk might move in about eight months when my daughter goes to college. This yeah. might go into my youngest, her room. We might turn that into an office and then she's going to go into my oldest daughter's room. Cool. Yeah. That's what we talked about. And it's like, we have the grandkids like four or five weekends a year. They can deal with the computer being in that room. Yeah. Yeah. And if we have a guest, they can deal with the computer. We never, we haven't had a guest in probably five years spend the night, but it's nice to have a guest room just in case. Right. Right. So they can, they can deal with it too. It's 2022 is coming to a close, and I thought maybe we'd look back on some of our favorite moments and talk our favorite pickups of the year. Uh, we still wanted to do some sort of roundtable at some point, too, yeah. this year. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, yeah. So what the... So coming off of the uh, Micro Galaxy Squadron talk, I thought I'd put it up there uh, talking to Maxwell a couple episodes ago about the Ma- Micro Galaxy Squadron. Um, that was a great discussion, and it's a great opportunity to talk Star Wars and learn a little bit more about that line and share that with people and get the word out there that, you know, maybe you should start looking at this one. Yeah. To collect. So that, is that just your number one or just? No, it's not a number one. I don't have an order. I was just okay. going to go, hey, just gonna... remember that time we did this? And then hear the harps going boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And uh, we're talk about it. Yeah. Um. Jeez, dude, it's been such a weird this year has seemed forever because uh, we did a lot of stuff this year when you think yeah. about it. Yeah. You, you, you know, um, I guess my, even though I didn't have like a great 
it wasn't like Orlando, but I think going to celebration this year, you know, that that's a great memory. Uh, you know, once you get away from it and you're able to think on it, uh, celebrations, a good memory, just all in all. And there's memories yeah. we can, we can get into like microcosms of, of celebration here in a minute, but yeah, yeah. celebration definitely was a, was a good memory. Been playing off what you were talking about before, like you can't believe this was 2020 and all the stuff that happened in 2020. I was looking through my stuff and the Razor Crest came in 2020. That was like one of the first things that happened in the air is that the Razor Crest shipped. I'm like, oh, I got that this year. So that's one of my favorite collectibles. But I just was like, oh, that was 2022. I thought that was like a year ago, yeah. which technically it is. Yes. But I thought it was 2021. Yeah. Um, gosh, I'd have to even look at a calendar to kind of get jog my memory with all this stuff. Because, you know, um, you know, we had a Cincinnati trip at the end, of, you know, first of October, you know, another awesome Cincinnati trip. Um, I'm just going up there and, and looking around and hanging out with, with the friends that showed up uh, in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. As far as that goes. Um, yeah, celebration. Let's get into celebration. Yeah, that man, was pretty let's awesome. talk celebration. Um, running into you and McGregor is the first thing that comes into mind. I still, you were like a little kid at the, at a candy store yeah, when that happened. I was man. like freaking out. Yeah. Cause that, I think like we've talked about this. I'm sorry to have to rehash it, but there was an element of shock. Like I wasn't walking to bump into you and McGregor. And I said, I bump into, he was 30 feet away from me and an empty floor, which it felt like I was bumping into him. Like, what? Whoa. And he's walking at me and then he waves <laughs> and he smiles. And I'm like, whoa that's awesome yeah you were like dude no that was a cool moment because like you said it was um it was unexpected and i mean his security guards you know they were being firm but they were letting us have the moment you know they weren't being dicks they were like you, you stay you be over cool, there we'll be cool yeah right 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 don't be don't be don't do anything stupid and we're not going to kick your ass and you know enjoy the moment and just stand there and fangirl. And that's exactly what you had your camera out. We were chasing him around. And, uh, but go ahead. But to compare it, Jason is to Ewan as Glenn <laughs> is to Filoni. You're right. Dave Filoni. Oh, God. I will. Let me just. This celebration, I got spoiled because we had a fan table yeah. and we put the time in and we were able to get, you know, Narayan busted his butt and everybody in the club busted their butt. And we're able to get, we were able to uh, secure a fan table and that got us vendor badges or media badges or we were able to get in, get in like about an hour early so we could set up. So we were able to have all these experiences. So that kind of falls into everything, having, um, you know, that experience at celebration where you had that, that opportunity to go in early, but yes. So we're talking to the guys at Jazzwares and then one of our friends comes up and goes, (laughs) Dave Filoni's right there, and we kind of look at Max and just go, Woo, bye. And peace out, dude. We'll talk to you a couple <laughs> months from now on a podcast. Yes. So then I, I'm running after Dave Filoni with my camera out, and he's walking. He's not on a he's not on a, a cart like uh Hugh and McGregor was. He was going to Rancho Obi-Wan. Yeah, dude. I kind of wish he would have been like, come on up and come to say hi. But I think he was just sort of like, whatever, man. Day over there, See, but go ahead. You're having fantasies about with Filoni. Come on, let's go get a beer. And I'm just like <laughs> freaking out that you and saw me. And then you're making fun of me for freaking out that you and saw me. And here you are, like writing fan fiction. Then Dave Filoni and I start writing an episode with Hera and, <laughs> and Sabine. <laughs> he wants to know what happened. Uh, but then, like, as he's going up the escalator to get to to Rancho, I think it would have been a little weird. Uh if I would have followed him, but I think if I wanted to have, if we wouldn't have had a plane to catch, I would have got on the escalator and, and seen if somebody kicked me out or not. Uh, yeah. But then I was able to like yell at him and get his attention and be like, I'm like, it's a once in a lifetime. I got to go. Thanks, Dave. And he kind of waves yeah. to me and he's like, just kind of keeps thank going. You. I think he said, thank you back. I think he did. Yeah. He said, thanks. And kind of waved. Uh, I got the video somewhere on my phone. <laughs> that yeah, we I was could videotaping. Do. You did. It was great. Um, but dude, dude, just the the whole um to reiterate that what we talked about celebration is when we went with the flow this is the kind of stuff that happened 
And we wanted to have the opportunity if you wanted to have forgotten the ice cream cups in your suitcase. Yeah. Ice cream and, cups going back to get that. Like everything worked out. I went to return the ice cream cups, but I decided to buy that vintage collection figure. Then we went, decided right at the last minute, let's go back to Micro Galaxy Squadron. We bump into our friend who says, Filoni's right there. It's just like, had one of those things in that chain not happen. Yeah. You wouldn't have seen Filoni. Exactly. Oh, it was, now you're making me reminisce about Celebration, man. You're jogging my memory. And now I'm looking back on it and as with fond memories rather than frustration, you know, and it, not that it's I was frustrated, weekend. huh? It's a busy weekend. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go ahead. No, no, you're good, man. It's it's an insane weekend. It was you're just you're trying to pack. You can't get everything in, and then you're hearing stories about all these people that are hanging out and staying up late. And you're like, dude, I can't. You just you can't pack everything into celebration. And then I'm looking at Disneyland, going, I want to go to Disneyland. So <laughs> you know, it was just it as awesome as a week as much frustrated as I was with the weekend, it was still an awesome weekend and jogging my memory and remembering the good times. is awesome. It was, a, it was, yeah. I can't wait. I mean, I am, I'm, I'm bummed that it's in England next year, but I'm glad because I really need a year off. Uh, yes. There's other yes. things I want to do besides go to celebration and I'm um, fingers crossed. It'll be, they'll give us a year and then it'll be in Orlando. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, another highlight from celebration was doing the fan club family feud. You had mentioned we were, we had the fan table, and yeah. so uh, members that organized the um, what is it called? The collecting track put together. Yes. They have a room. They had a really big room this year, and they're like, "What well, can we do with this?" So they did family feud, but they did collecting teams. So we were up against the Sarlacc group uh, with Jim Gibbons, Amy. Um, Amy, uh, no, Ryan's yelling at me. <laughs> I, I could see your last name. I'm not gonna Gus Lopez and uh, Tom. Dang it! <laughs> see, this is the fog that I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't uh, even Tom remember Stewart. a man. Yeah. Tom Stewart, yeah, and Amy Sober Sobern. Sobern? I get that. I'm sorry, Amy. Um, if you listen, uh, but anyways, yeah, to go up against them, like Sarlacc is a legendary, like one of the first collecting clubs. In America, in the United States, I think Gus brought it back. He saw collecting clubs elsewhere throughout the world, and he brought it back. And to go up against them in Family Feud was pretty amazing. And then for us to win was pretty awesome because we're the new kids on the block, which was one of the, the names I had for our team was the new club on the block or something like that. Yeah. How about no, that would... tattoo? And I got a tattoo. I got a hair tattoo, yeah. which I was late for the thing for, which yeah. I could just see Narayan's disapproval as I ran up the last minute. It's all good. We won. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and, and then you, I, I remember because, um, shoot, my thing was my, when it finally came around to me, my it was like animated series. And I go Ewoks. And I went, why the crap did I say Ewoks? Because yeah, <laughs> my mind's going to vintage <laughs> Not yeah. modern stuff, so I'm thinking about vintage. Um, but we ended up pulling it in, pulling it. I got scolded for calling Farm Boy Luke Farm Boy Luke. Yeah. Um, and I say that, and they were in jest, you know, it yes. wasn't really serious. But I'm like, what do you call Luke? Starter Luke? White Luke? I don't want to call him White Luke because there's White Luke and Black Luke and Orange Luke. Yeah, I don't. We'll I would figure call it out him. someday. What did they not give you a proper answer? No, I just kind of shut my mouth. And just, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not going to argue with the expert who literally wrote the book on it, dude. It, oh my god, I was listening to the latest David Quinn podcast, and it's like, oh crap, you you you're learning, you know, because they were talking. He was talking to um, Ron Salvatore. Ron, Sal you say, hey, you got that right. Uh, but then they was talking about Gus Lopez and how uh, he ended up hooking up with Gus Lopez like 20 years ago when the internet wasn't even the internet, you know, that type thing. Yeah. And it's like, wow, just, you know, crazy to, to hear the history of that. Yeah. We got to see a lot of new people at celebration. Like I never met Jim Jones before. So yeah. we had to hang out with him and um, yeah, my brain is, is fried. <laughs> I'm trying to look up names. 
Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, Jim, yeah, hanging out with Jim was cool. There was, yeah, there was just a ton of people that it, it was like anybody who's any, everybody who's anybody was at celebration and it was just cool hanging out with them again, you know? Yeah. It's cool to hang out with friends. It's cool. Yes. That's, and I think that's sort of what has got me really excited about everything right now is just playing out, hanging out with friends. Now, was it right before, sorry. No, no, no. You said, and I thought you were oh, done. No, I, I was going to say, I misread I think the that's, pause. I'm sorry. I paused. I think that's why I'm excited about, uh, oh, I hope I didn't lose you. All right, cool. I, I closed the zoom thing out before I thought about I'm it. I'm still here. I'm still there. Cool. Um, and that's sort of what's happened with me and toy shows is it's more about hanging out with friends than it is about shopping. Yeah. And I think celebration was kind of the catalyst of that. Now, was it right before celebration we did the Woodstock trivia contest, Star Wars trivia contest? I think so. Or yeah. was it either right before place? or right after? Who came in first place there? Uh, J Dubs. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Yes, I won that. Yes. Yes, I came in. Fourth. I beat you and Jordan. Yeah, that's because I couldn't figure out Count Dooku. I, and, and it was one of those where you look, you you kind of learn the the um rhythm of the questions and it's like if you thought it was that that was the answer that was the answer type yeah. situation don't think yeah just, just answer go with your instinct and yeah that there's got also me kicked a, out of there's also, also a time thing right so like if you answer in the first three seconds you get like 93 points yeah and then if you're four seconds you get like 88 or 85 like the points decrease as you take your time to answer. So you get rewarded for trusting your instinct in that. And I think that's why I pulled out. I pulled in. <laughs> <laughs> Hold home the win. How about that? Yes, that's why you won. Um, moving on. Moving Move on. Along. Yeah. Move along. Um, I struggle with naming this one uh, because it does become like self-promotion. So I just want to like, I'm not. I always think like when you do a good thing, you you should do a good thing because it's a good thing. The second you bring it up to talk about and celebrate, like it becomes self-promotion. So I don't want to dwell on this, but for the Toy Lanta art auction, we raised what what, $2,200. Yeah. Thank you to David Sean for matching it. I think it was 24 because I think we had $1,200. Then David Sean couldn't make it and he matched it, which brought it up to $2,400 to Choa. Yeah. And that's just, it's just great to be part of a, a community that gives back like that no i i have to agree i mean i think the the uh the ch- uh charity work we do with the club is is pretty awesome it's awesome that we can do that and we have a group of of people that are willing to contribute like that um do you have any other memories because i have one left uh go for it maybe it'll jog another memory yeah from the last thing from toylanta was and and from celebration was the running of the Wilbur Hoods. <laughs> yes. And how how vastly different experience both were. They're complete ends of the spectrum <laughs> where at Toylanta, which is predominantly again a G.I. Joe, or at least you be used to be a G.I. Joe, they're trying to evolve it to more all encompassing when it comes to toys. But Narayan and I were running around screaming, <laughs> save the ice cream. Save the rebellion with everybody with like five people understanding what was going on. And it was just weird. They were all members of the club. Yeah. And then you go to celebration and everyone's like getting out of your way, cheering you on. There's more of us. We get up on the star Wars stage. And it's just night and day in comparison to the experience. And I love them both. I love the awkwardness of the toy land to like what's going on. Everyone's looking at us. And I love how everyone's celebrating it and and living in the moment. Like, yeah, let's go save the ice cream, save the rebellion. It was awesome. Yeah. And both times with Narayan. It was great. (laughs) Yeah. No, I just, yeah, I, I, this is just generic. It's just, it's cultivating all the friendships we've made, you know, throughout the years and, and being able to do that. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So good times. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Um, 
I have a whole list of collectibles, but do you want to save that for next week? Yeah, let's save that for next week, and I'll uh, I'll have to come up with a list. Okay, of collectibles that I got for. Yeah, I don't have any. I think I got one, two, three, five, six, like eight ish. Okay, I'll come up with. And like they're eight-ish. not in order like this one. Okay, and then we'll do something like that next week. We'll do a collectible, yeah. and then we'll uh, yeah, email us please. We got one oh. email, and we'll read it at the uh, year in review. Yeah. And we have one prize so far. We're still trying to figure out what we're going to give away for this Micro Galaxy Squadron. But I was at Target this week, and I happened upon the Chase Outrider. Was it the Outrider? What does he call it? The Moth Gideon's TIE Fighter. Moth Gideon's TIE Fighter. But it's got like the Outrider TIE Fighter or something like that. It's got a name. It's that TIE Fighter that the wings fold. Right. Which is a great piece and i really like it um it's just when you fold the wings up it looks like a regular tie fighter so i prefer to display it down but uh we're gonna randomly pick someone who shares how their collecting year went kind of the same thing we're doing here just give us your thoughts about you know maybe what you think about the hobby in 2022 or your experiences or maybe your favorite collectibles we're gonna leave it up to you um send it in let us know what you thought your how your year went and we'll randomly pick someone from a generator um and you will get Free of charge. You don't have to pay for anything. No shipping as long as it's in the lower 48. Um, If it's beyond that, we might have to ask you to help us out with that. But it'll be yours. Um, We might pick up something more for this contest, but we might not. So at least you get that. Yes. Smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Yes. Anything else? I think that's it. I don't know if anything... Anything else fun and exciting in the Star Wars universe? There's no, no Disney kind of, news. No, no announcements. It's kind of quiet. Um, it's probably going to be like that throughout the uh, holiday season. And when you come back, you know, Bad Batch will start. Uh, Mandalorian will be. They changed that to March 1st. I think so. Uh, the rumor was, I guess, February 22nd, but they changed it to March 1st. So we've got another two and a half months until we get to see more Mandalorian which I'm excited about. Um, but yeah, Ahsoka yeah. will come out next year. They're filming the Acolyte right now. Those photos kind of hit the web. Did we talk about the Acolyte any? No, no, not really. Okay. Well, maybe we you can talk about it real quick. Yeah, let's save that. I mean, yeah, no, because I, I, yes, let's talk about it because I think it's coming from a totally different um, view than what we were thinking of because they've kind of released what's happening with it at least, right? I don't know. They've re- they? cuz originally it was going to be almost I thought they had kind of described it as like an X-Files meets Star Wars type thing and now they've released that it's the way that the Sith infiltrated the Jedi is what they're going to do with it. Why can't it be both? I guess you could be. Yeah, it takes place what towards the end of the High Republic. Yeah. And the start of I mean, we're 100 years away from the Phantom Menace. So, I mean, will we see Darth Plagueis? I just want to hear his story. The tale. Have you ever heard the tragedy (laughs) of Darth Plagueis the Wise? (laughs) Um, Have you seen the pictures? Yeah, yeah. Um, The 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 Chewbacca, the Wookiee, looks really cool. Yeah, I think it all looks really good. I'm 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 excited for it. the, their costumes do look like the cover art for those High Republic books. I the the chewy the 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 chewy the whatever that thing the Wookie he definitely reminded yeah. me of High Republic. Yeah, maybe. I mean, do you, I wonder if they could? I have to look at the hot timeline for High Republic and see if that would even fit in the timeline of this. Because what the High Republic starts. Four or two hundred years before the Phantom I Menace. thought it was like seven, but I may be wrong. I mean, Yoda could be around in this thing too. Yeah, Yoda was. And yeah, oh my God, I didn't even think about that because Yoda's and in you, the High Republic, but they don't really. They just he's he's a mention. They don't really go into it. I know other books. I think that the young some of the younger kid books they go into Yoda uh, being there, but um, I think in, in at least in the adult versions, he was just a mention. Maybe Andy Circus will be in this too. <laughs> Maybe he can be. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But yeah, um, <laughs> it looks cool. Um, I like the idea that it's like X Files. So maybe they're dealing with dark side mo- monsters or something like that. Um, you have to remember at one of the books, and I don't even know what's canon anymore, even in the modern canon, because they change things as, as evident in that Ahsoka stuff. But at one point, there was some sort of dark side cave on Coruscant that the Jedi's, the Jedi built their temple upon mm-hmm. to try to block some of that dark side energy. But I thought the dark side energy seeped into the Jedi temple, which is how it was easy for Sidious to infiltrate. And it did affect them because they're not supposed to be warriors and generals are supposed to be, you know, like monks. We've talked yeah. about this before, but... Yeah, we'll see. Should be a good show. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm curious if they're going to bring some of the High Republic into it because I really enjoyed the High Republic, uh, at least the adult book. And I don't know if they've come out with another one yet or not. It was a yeah. good read. It was just a lot of crap going on. Are you reading Heir to the Empire right now or listening to it or something? I listen. I read. I'm about a quarter of the way through the first book, but then I picked up the Thrawn, the middle Thrawn novel again for some reason and decided to start reading that again. Uh, okay. I was, what, or when's the last time yeah, you I'm read thinking, air? Huh? It's been a while, but I'm like, what if we just read air to the empire in January and talk about it in February? Okay. The, the whole series or just the first book, just the first book. I can't do that. <laughs> I was talking like, to someone at work and they're like, I read this book in a week. I'm like, how did you do that? What superpower do you have? Dude? I don't, I don't, it's called not picking up, uh, telephone i guess probably is what i would assume because i was doing awesome until i got a tablet i read a lot and then i bought a tablet and then you get a telephone and then it's just you don't read anymore all right well you want to wrap it up then yeah it's only 8 30 but yes let's do it uh there's no real announcements we've got right no Um, not really nothing new it's it's the quiet time of the year it's going to be quiet for a little bit longer yeah so thank you for listening to the smugglers galaxy podcast if you could please leave a like and a five-star review of the show anywhere you listen to podcasts if it's allowed it really helps us out and it points people to our show follow us on social media you can find us on facebook instagram twitter and youtube send us an email or message us we'd love to make you part of the show and we always love feedback and we want you to be part of our year end in review uh Send us how things were going. Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. I should say, tell us how things went, not things were going. Yes. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smugglers Galaxy logo. You can find him on Puerto Rico Star Wars and on Facebook. And thank you to Levi Waterhouse for the music. Hasbro re-released VC66. Hashtag vote with your wallet. Pass on what you've learned. Be a positive force in the collecting community. This 